Alan West, I wanted to revisit this activity because there's certain takeaways we should have here. Um, and I want to make sure that they are explicit. After you're, you're completed this activity, and I will do a quick screen split there. So after you complete this activity, there are certain things we want you to be able to do. So for example, we would want you to take a look here at these equations and be able to tell us which one is standard form. And so this is a vocabulary piece that we want you to get into your vocabulary. And that is when we say standard form and when you say standard form or you look for an equation that is in standard form, it's going to look like this. It's going to be y equals or f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. That is the generic formula. The a, the b, the c represent numbers. And so this is one where you have an, a squared term, a linear term, and there are no parentheses groupings. Okay, So you should be able to look and say, OK, this is standard form, this is standard form, this is standard form. So in a C of equations, you should be able to lift out standard form. The same is true for factored and graphing forms here. So as you take a look here, factored form is um, two parentheses groupings may be an outside coefficient because there was a greatest common factor. And um, graphing form is where we have one parentheses grouping a quantity squared plus a constant. Perhaps there is a coefficient up ahead um, that is visible, not one. So that's the first thing. The second is to take a look here and say, all right, I know this is standard form, and because it's standard form, it always tells me the y-intercept. So again, connecting standard form to y-intercept is also the goal of this activity. And so we know from the exploration that we get to just lift out the constant term from, st from standard form, and this tells us the y-intercept. So before we even graph, we should be able to say, that we know that this equation tells us the y-intercept and that occurs at 0 comma 11. And so this should occur right at 0 comma 11, right? We should know that beforehand. So I'm just going to slide this over again because we don't want to be overly led by this work. Um, I guess I could have just left it there. So. The next one, we should be able to recognize that it is factored form and state it as such, and to know that factored form will always tell us the x-intercepts. That's also the goal, the takeaway from these um, equations you went through on Desmos and the worksheet. And so what's interesting that we've seen so far, and maybe you already know why, but the x-intercepts, we can't just lift them out. That's really a negative 1, and that's really a negative 11. But hopefully you've noticed a pattern, and maybe you have an algebraic reason why. These x-intercepts are actually positive 1 and 0 and positive 11 and 0. And so when we turn it on, there they are. Okay. So this is how you introduce challenge into this work, is you start challenging yourself to name the, the components of the parabola before you activate the screen. Okay, so we're going to talk more in class about why there's a sign flip here. But for now, it's good for you to just recognize that pattern. The last thing, the last takeaway is recognizing that this graphing form actually tells us the vertex. And so it's often called the vertex form. And this one, hopefully we notice that this right here, because it's not in a parenthesis, much like the y-intercept, we get to take as is and we don't have to change anything about it. But this negative 6 in here is in a parenthesis, and just like the x-intercepts, needs a sign adjustment. So again, it's more than just a sign flip, and we're going to talk about why that is, or maybe you figured out why that is. So this means that the vertex is at positive 6, comma, negative 25. And so let's go find the vertex positive 6, negative 25. So the goal is that we could give you any equation. You could name what equation form it is, what it tells us, and what that specific point is about that parabola. Okay. So as you scroll down, we start to see some changes like here. In this one, now this parabola faces down and it's much more stretched out. That's because of the A term, this negative 8 right here. So anything, if we look above, they were all positives in front of um, these 
at the start of these equations, and they were all parabolas that faced up. So the other takeaway is that if the lead coefficient is positive, then this is a parabola that faces upward or opens upward. If this is a lead coefficient that is negative, the parabola will face and open downward. The, ne the 8 also plays a role here, and hopefully that's another takeaway you have, is that when the number is closer to 1, um, it's a bit more standard looking, but when it's a number, um, absolute value bigger than one, then it makes for a faster pace within the parabola. And what that does is it means that you shoot up really fast and back down really fast. It causes a stretching of that parabola. If, however, do we have one down here? Um, if we take a look at a number between, for the coefficient that's between zero and one, it's actually a broader, wider parabola. I think of it as a slower pace. The change of um, movement here is much slower. It feels a lot like a slope. So that is the other takeaway. Okay, so um, keep up the good work. Remember as you do your work, don't treat it as checklist items. You want to make sure that you're learning the vocabulary and the connections because if you can develop that level of mastery from this one initial activity, I promise you the rest of the quadratics unit is just going to make total sense. You won't be memorizing things that you don't know when to use them and you will just be able to navigate it very well and confidently. All right, keep up the good work and get out of the split screen. Have a good day.